Awesome. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, thank you to the .NET user group for having me back. It's been a while since I've last spoke, um, but I think every other time has been in person so far. So this will be my first time doing it virtually. All right, so um, with great power comes great responsibility. Throughout human history, various societies gained access to new technological superpowers. During the Industrial Revolution, um, we saw, well, in many cases, these new superpowers, they led to amazing improvements in everyone's lives. However, in some cases, these superpowers were abused by a few for their own power, profit, and control, often to the detriment of many less fortunate individuals. Now, during the agricultural revolution, agricultural societies gained the ability to raise large armies, and they often misused this superpower to acquire new land, enslave human labor, and subjugate entire civilizations. During the Industrial Revolution, industrial societies gained the ability to mechanize warfare, and they misused this superpower to control resources, maintain colonies, and expand their political influence. During the Information Revolution, information societies gained the ability to wage cyber warfare, and we have definitely misused this new superpower for mass surveillance, industrial sabotage, and political propaganda. Now, during the AI Revolution, we're likely to see more of the same. We're going to discover that we have some amazing new superpowers in just the next few years. However, <clears throat> there are going to be some people who will try to use these new superpowers for their own self-interest and personal agendas. The purpose of this presentation is to learn how to use AI responsibly and ethically. I want you to start thinking more deeply about the ethical problems that surround AI and to be better prepared to solve these problems if and when you encounter them. Now, as an overview of our presentation, first, we'll learn about AI ethics for today, the ethical issues that we're currently dealing with, like privacy, bias, and transparency. Next, we'll learn about AI ethics for tomorrow, ethical issues for the next decade involving our labor economy, synthetic media, and loss of autonomy. Finally, we'll learn about AI ethics for the future, potential ethical issues for the next century involving artificial general intelligence, the value alignment problem, and potential existential risk to humanity. And when we get this far out in time and scope, things are going to get a little weird and probably a bit scary, but I'll leave it up to you to decide what seems like science fiction and what might be plausible and or real. All right, so we've got a lot to cover today, so let's get started. First, let's discuss AI ethics for today, the ethical issues that we're, are currently impacting our day-to-day -day individual lives. We're going to begin with a quick story called Alice and Bob in AI Land, and this is chapter one of our story, AI Ethics of Today. So meet Alice and Bob. Alice and Bob are both in their 30s. They have two children, Dan and Claire and Dan, who are both 10 years old. One day, Claire and Dan asked their parents if they can have a pet. However, they can't decide on whether they should get a cat or a dog. So to help them decide, Alice and Bob begin researching online. Alice clicks on a few links about the benefits of owning a cat, while Bob clicks on a few videos about what it's like to own a dog. A few clicks later, Alice is surrounded by videos of cat lovers expounding the joys of cat ownership, and Bob is being recommended nothing but videos about how awesome dogs are. A few more clicks, Alice starts seeing articles about how dog lovers will never understand cat lovers, and Bob is seeing videos from dog lovers about how cat lovers are all super weird. Alice and Bob both go down their respective internet rabbit holes. Soon, everything Alice sees on the internet says that cat lovers are great and dog lovers are horrible people, and everything Bob sees tells him that dog lovers are awesome and cat lovers are terrible people. They start watching cat TV and the dog news network exclusively, they only read articles and social media posts that support their existing beliefs about cats or dogs, and they abandon or accidentally destroy friendships with people who hold opposing views. So they start associating with only cat lovers or dog lovers respectively, and pretty soon they're surrounded with only people and information that agrees with their worldview. Alice and Bob are now stuck in information bubbles and echo chambers. So the time comes for the family to vote on their new pet. Claire and Dan are both excited to learn which pet they'll be getting. However, Alice and Bob's conversation about the pros and cons of cats and dogs completely falls apart. Alice accuses Bob of being a horrible dog lover who kills baby kittens, and Bob accuses Alice of being a violent cat lover who kicks tiny puppies. Alice and Bob both start yelling at each other, and they slam the door as they walk out of the room. Their children, Claire and Dan, are completely stunned and confused. They just wanted a new pet. However, something has caused a major rift in the family, and Alice and Bob's home has become a house divided. All right, so there are many benefits of modern AI today. 
For example, we have recommendation engines. They help us decide what movies to watch, which songs to listen to, and what products to buy. We have voice assistants. They respond to our voice commands, provide us with useful information, and control the devices in our homes. We have robot vacuums. They clean our carpets, mop our floors, and keep our pets entertained for hours on end. We also have navigation software on our smartphone. They get us to our destination, keep us from getting lost, and help us discover what's nearby. We have non-player characters in video games. They make playing games more interesting, challenging, and fun. And we now have large language models like ChatGPT. They help us to generate emails, summarize articles, debug our code, and much more. There are a multitude of benefits of modern AI, way more benefits than we could possibly enumerate in this short presentation. However, these benefits come at the cost of new ethical issues that we're now facing. These modern AI ethical issues, they come in many forms. First, we have these recommendation rabbit holes. Recommendation engines are designed to provide us with useful content that we might like. However, they are also designed to maximize engagement. They need to keep us clicking on more content in order to maximize ad revenue. And this can quickly lead us down rabbit holes of progressively more extreme content because controversial topics keep you clicking on more content just to see what happens next. Eventually, you can end up stuck in information bubbles, a place where these recommendation engines show us only what they know that we want to consume, rather than the information that we probably should be consuming. And this leads to echo chambers, where essentially everybody that we interact with essentially ends up agreeing with our worldview because we've pushed everyone else away. We stop engaging with people with opposing or even moderate viewpoints at this point. And this can lead to conspiratorial thinking and extremist worldviews. And in the worst cases, it's led to suicide, violence, and terrorist attacks. It can also lead to various forms of internet addiction. For example, unhealthy addictions to social media, news, and novelty, amongst other things. Next, we have a lack of privacy. And now there are numerous examples of AI being used to potentially violate our right to privacy. AI-enabled surveillance systems, they monitor our movements through building cities and now even countries. Um, our public social media data can be used to make predictions about our private information, like being able to use Facebook information to predict someone's sexual orientation, political affiliation, behavioral traits, and even mental health issues. Um, our shopping history can be used to predict if we're pregnant and can actually estimate our due date. And our anonymized data can now be de-anonymized with AI tools by joining these multiple data sets together with AI algorithms. All it takes is just three pieces of data, uh, your date of birth, your gender, and your zip code for a data scientist to essentially de-anonymize your data with roughly 87% accuracy. Essentially, what does privacy even mean in a world with constant and pervasive AI-enabled surveillance? The reality is that we have very little privacy now, and we're about to get a lot less. Third, we have algorithmic bias and discrimination, and there are numerous examples of AI producing biased results. We have racially biased criminal risk uh, scoring algorithms, which were roughly twice as likely to label Black defendants as high risk of criminal reoffense, uh, regardless of their actual uh, risk of reoffense. Uh, we have resume screening algorithms that routinely prefer male candidates over female candidates, even with identical qualifications. Even if we take the exact same resume and we remove gender, the AI still learns to infer gender from the subtle differences in language usage uh, within the body of the resume or the answers to the questions. So we also have facial recognition algorithms that have a much higher failure rate for dark skin tones and female faces relative to straight white males. And AI image generators frequently lighten people's skin tone and hypersexualize women and young girls in order to conform to societal stereotypes for beauty. So the general issue with all of this bias in AI algorithms is that we have a lot of human bias in our labeled training data. And if your data is biased, your results will be biased. As the old saying goes, garbage in, garbage out. Unfortunately, algorithmic bias can create feedback loops that reinforce existing societal stereotypes, and this can lead to long-term, higher-order, multi-generational effects, further reinforcing these societal stereotypes and discrimination for generations to come. Fourth, we have a lack of trust in AI predictions and decision-making. There is a lack of transparency in many of these opaque AI systems. Uh, black box deep neural networks make predictions that even their creators can't understand. Adversarial attacks allow bad actors to easily trick AIs into making incorrect predictions. And there's this thing we call the uncanny valley, this space between a cute toy-like robot and a real human being. 
Uh, we naturally distrust things that look almost like us, but have subtle inhuman differences. But wait, there's more. We also have AI hallucination, this new phenomenon of generative models confidently making up completely believable but entirely false information. Problems with misinformation generated on a mass scale. Um, this can lead to propaganda, distrust in institutions, conspiracies, and extremist views. And finally, we have a lack of basic AI education. Unfortunately, most people don't understand AI, its capabilities, or its limitations. So unfortunately, they can't make effective decisions that involve AI and how AI will impact all of us. Fortunately, there are several potential solutions to uh, many of these problems of modern AI. First, we can escape information bubbles by avoiding these recommendation rabbit holes. So as users of AI systems, we should use privacy tools that prevent recommendation engines from sending us down these rabbit holes. For example, using incognito mode, clearing your history, disabling cookies, et cetera. Um, use filters to block specific keywords that might lead you toward extremist content or content with extremist views. Um, and stop using click holes, which are websites and social media that are intentionally designed to keep continuously pulling you further into those rabbit holes. And now as creators of these AI systems, which many of us are, um, we should give users options to opt out of recommendations that they don't want. Uh, we should value mental health, social good, and objective truth above ad revenue and profits and support sensible regulations that protect us from the dangers of these recommendation engines. Second, protect your privacy. As users of AI systems, we should once again use privacy tools like incognito mode, disable cookies, and use a VPN. Um, we should use throwaway email accounts, throwaway usernames, and one-time credit card numbers for any place that we don't want to give out our information or we don't want our information aggregated. Um, and then stop using these data harvesting mobile apps that like gratuitously really collect and sell our data. Uh, you'll usually find them as like simple gimmicky things that when you install it, ask you to enable like all of the rights on your phone. And you're like, why would it need access to all of these things? It's just like a um, cat face generator or something. And as creators of these AI systems, uh, we should provide users with uh, opt-out options from data harvesting and resale of data to third parties. At bare minimum, we should at least give the users the ability to opt out of these systems. Um, use strong anonymization and encryption technology so the data is harder to de-anonymize or de-encrypt. And support sensible privacy regulations like the uh, EU's GDPR and California CCPA. Um, only trust your private data to those who can and will protect it. And if you are entrusted with the private data of others, be sure that you can and will protect it. Third, we need to minimize algorithmic bias and discrimination in our AI systems. Um, as creators of AI systems, you should use diverse and balanced data sets when training your AI models. If we add the diversity into the models while training them, they will have more diverse generalization in their results. Exclude protected attributes like race, gender, and sexual orientation from our training and inference. Detect bias in your models using techniques like shape, lime, model perturbations, and surrogate models. Use fairness metrics to determine if your models are biased against specific subgroups. And then continuously monitor and retrain models to prevent model drift over time. Oh, and uh, also support sensible regulations that protect fairness and minimize bias and discrimination. Fourth, we need to create more trustworthy AI systems. As creators of AI systems, we should choose transparent AI systems over black box systems. Uh, the rule of thumb I use is if you can't explain your model's decision to a judge or the judge wouldn't understand your explanation because the math is too difficult, uh, then your model is not transparent. Always use the simplest solution that effectively solves the problem. Don't use a deep neural network if a simple decision tree classifier will suffice. Use explainable AI tools and techniques to make your models more interpretable. Make uncertainty more obvious by providing users with measures of the predictions like accuracy, error rates, and confidence scores. Keep a human in the loop to prevent potentially harmful AI systems from being fully autonomous. And provide a method of recourse when your AI's decision negatively impacts your users. Essentially, if your users don't trust your AI system, they're not going to use it. So make your system trustworthy. Beyond this, we also need to fight misinformation with critical thinking. So for every piece of content you consume on the internet or otherwise, you need to ask yourself, who is the author and what are their credentials? Who is the publisher and how reputable are they? What are the claims that the author is making? How strong is the evidence in support of their argument? What are the sources of their evidence? 
and be skeptical of everything in general, but still try to keep an open mind. And, you know, maybe it's time to take a break from social media or get off social media altogether. I mean, we know it's addictive and it's not good for our mental health. So why do we continue to use it every day? And finally, just talk to other people. Meet people that are different from you. Make friends with them. Learn about their culture, their perspectives, and their amazing food. Now, I've visited over 50 countries in uh, on every continent in the world so far, and I can safely say that we are way more similar than we are different. Almost everyone I have ever met wants essentially the same things. They want to be safe, they want to be happy, and they want to be loved. And that's pretty much it. All right, so what about Alice and Bob? How are they doing after their argument over cats and dogs? Well, Alice and Bob currently aren't speaking to one another. However, their kids, Claire and Dan, learn about these things called recommendation algorithms in school the next day. They explain to their parents how recommendation algorithms can pull people down these internet rabbit holes. They say that this leads to information bubbles, echo chambers, and a potentially extremist worldviews. So Alice and Bob decide to take a break from social media. They begin talking to other pet owners in person. They learn that most dog lovers don't hate cats, and most cat lovers have nothing against dogs. And they even meet a few families that have both cats and dogs and love them both equally. So the family gets together again in order to take another vote on the family pet. This time, together, as a family, they decide to get both a cat and a dog. They discover that their family functions better with both cat lovers and dog lovers in it. And they live happily ever after. At least until Chapter 2, AI Ethics for Tomorrow. All right, so now let's discuss AI ethics for tomorrow, the ethical issues that our society is going to be dealing with in the next decade or so. Back to Alice and Bob in AI land. So this is chapter two, AI ethics of tomorrow. So the year is now 2030. Alice and Bob are now both in their 40s. They both still live in their family home with their cat and dog. However, their two children, Claire and Dan, they're both in their 20s now, so they moved out after college. Alice, she still works as an accountant for a local business, and Bob is still a builder at the assembly line at the local factory. Unfortunately, Alice loses her accounting job to software automation, and Bob loses his job to robotic factory automation. Both search for new jobs, but neither can find a new one in their hometown. With a lack of income, they're concerned that they might have to sell their family home. So they invite the kids over for dinner to tell them the bad news. Claire is now a computer scientist who lives in the neighboring town to the west, and Dan is now a data scientist who lives in the neighboring town to the east. The parents explain how they can't find any jobs that they're qualified for in their hometown, and the kids, completely surprised, mention how they're constantly being offered new jobs and salary increases. Alice says, well, that's because all of the alpha lineals are taking all of our jobs. And Bob says, no, it's the outsiders from the east and the west neighborhoods taking all the good jobs. Now, the children, both being alpha lineals from the east and west neighborhoods, take offense to this. The whole family gets into a screaming match at the dinner table, and everyone's now upset. Dinner's been ruined again, and even their cat and their dog aren't speaking to one another. So the AI of tomorrow is certainly going to provide us with many benefits. Uh, for example, we'll have the ability to automate a wider variety of manual labor and knowledge work. We'll have fully autonomous vehicles that will automate cars, semis, tractors, boats, and even airplanes. We'll have autonomous delivery drones that will transport packages straight to our doorstep. We'll have highly personalized software that will automate routine decisions in our workflow. We'll have lightweight virtual reality and augmented reality that will extend our senses with new information. We'll have domestic robots that will perform household chores. We'll have smart buildings that will anticipate the needs of their occupants. And we'll have smart cities that will uh, optimize municipal resources with little to no human in intervention. And all of these are going to create the addition, uh, additional benefit of higher paying and more meaningful high-tech jobs. However, the AI-enabled technology of the next decade is going to come with several significant issues. First, the automation of many existing jobs is going to create significant unemployment. We're going to automate the jobs that are simple, repetitious, costly, dangerous, and error-prone first, and then more jobs, more complex jobs will be coming soon after. According to McKinsey Global Research Institute, AI is expected to automate 600 million jobs. And that's, uh, to put it in perspective, that's 22% of all jobs in the world expected to be gone by 2030. 
Fortunately, they're also predicting 700 million new jobs are going to be created by 2030, and many of which will require AI tech skills. But this is going to be the fastest and most disruptive labor transition in human history. Unfortunately, our labor markets are not prepared for such a rapid transition from low-skill jobs to high-tech jobs. Our businesses, governments, universities, and our social safety nets are in no way, shape, or form prepared for any of this either. As a result, a lot of people are going to get left behind and stuck in very difficult economic situations. Um, this, in my opinion, is the single biggest short-term issue that we're going to face with AI in the coming decades. Uh, there's bigger issues coming down the road, but at least for the next decade, I think this is going to be the single biggest problem. We need to find really good solutions to, and we need to find them fast, if not five years ago already. Third, we have AI-generated synthetic media. Future AI-generated synthetic media is going to be virtually indistinguishable from human-generated content. It almost is today already. However, it could be used to produce propaganda and misinformation on a scale that we have never seen before. Deepfake technology could be used to impersonate politicians, celebrities, and executives for nefarious purposes. A deep nude technology, which can digitally remove a person's clothing without their consent, could be used for blackmail and exploitation. Uh, being constantly bombarded with synthetic perfection might create a digital hyperreality leading to new body dysmorphias, existential depression, and virtual escapism. And it may also lead to unhealthy relationships with virtual romantic partners and digital clones of deceased loved ones. But given all of the issues that we're already having with synthetic media today, I mean, you can only imagine how hard it's going to be to determine fiction from reality in just another decade. Fourth... <clears throat> We have AI reducing human agency and autonomy. For example, with just 10 likes on social media posts, an AI recommendation engine or AI system knows you as well as a, a work colleague. With just 70 likes on random posts, it knows you as well as a friend or roommate. With 150 likes, it knows you as well as a family member. 300 likes, and it knows you as well as your spouse. And soon, these AI systems will probably know you better than you know yourself. And with this level of insight, AI will have the ability to manipulate our decisions, all while making us believe that we were in control the entire time. Its ability to know if we're pregnant, having issues with addiction, in the middle of a mental health crisis or more, could be used to specifically target us when it knows that we're most vulnerable to these types of influence. Essentially, we're entering the era of surveillance capitalism, like a time where corporations are almost certainly going to use our personal data to manipulate us and our purchase decisions in ways that we have no methods to defeat. We won't even know we're being manipulated when this is happening. AI systems might someday also be able to physically prevent us from acting freely of our own volition. Like, will you even be able to break an unjust law or a law that you feel is unjust through civil disobedience in a world constantly monitored and controlled by AI systems? But there are even more issues coming with the next decades of AI technologies. Um, organizations with these powerful AI systems are going to have even more power than those without. Um, uh, uh, the, those without these systems will unfortunately have less power in terms of the balance. And it's going to be very difficult for individuals, other organizations, and even governments to compete with these AI behemoths. And this is likely going to lead to greater social stratification in our society unless we do something to prevent it. Uh, essentially, the rich will keep getting richer, the poor will keep getting poorer until uh, only a small fraction of the population owns the majority of all resources and production in the world. And what happens if a self-driving car needs to make a split-second choice between hitting a child or swerving, which would kill the driver? Um, who would even buy a car that was prioritized to kill you, the owner of the vehicle, over a random pedestrian? Finally, we have ethical issues with lethal autonomous weapon systems. Now, right now, fortunately, all of these autonomous weapon systems uh, are uh, have a human in the loop. Uh, a human activates a kill or no kill switch anytime it identifies a target. However, they are just one step away from being fully autonomous weapons. <clears throat> So how do we solve these ethical issues with tomorrow's AI? Now, over the next decade, um, we're going to have to make some pretty heavy investments in responsible and ethical AI. First, we need to educate everyone in society on basic AI literacy. Everyone needs to understand what AI is and what it isn't. We need to know the basics of machine learning, deep learning, and reinforcement learning, or at least what they are. We need to understand the pros and cons of various types of AI, we need to know the capabilities and limitations of modern AI, what's real, what's possible, what isn't. And we need to understand how AI will impact our lives, our careers, and our world. 
Oh, and we need to understand the ethical issues that AI presents both now and in the future. But ultimately, everything starts with basic AI literacy, and we need to start this literacy now. Second, we need to upgrade our skills uh, for an AI-driven economy. We need job retraining programs for those who become unemployed from AI automation. We need better retirement options for those who are too old to reskill. We need to create social safety nets to help people get back on their feet. We may need higher education for everyone, essentially free and mandatory higher education. And I should note, this sounds very controversial, and it was extremely controversial in the 1900s when they first suggested free and mandatory high school education. However, if you look back historically on the countries that implemented this, it is arguably one of the best decisions any of these countries, including the United States, has ever made. And it may just be the case that we're entering an era where something like this may be required now, too. And we may also need new economic systems to redistribute wealth through society. Um, many experts suggest that we need either a universal basic income, a negative income tax, a social stipend, or some other form of basic universal ownership. <clears throat> In terms of synthetic media, uh, we have a few potential issues. Uh, we can create deep fake detection tools that automatically filter real versus synthetic media. Um, we may need to create digital alibi services so that every person can ensure uh, where they were and what they were doing 24-7 if some synthetic media says you were doing something else that you weren't actually doing. This is probably more for celebrities and politicians than the average person. Um, and we may need to use trusted information verification services, third parties that verify information on our behalf, since it's going to be so difficult for the average person to decide uh, what's even real and what's not anymore. And we may need to add cryptographic watermarks um, to every piece of digital content or essentially store every piece of digital content, a hash of it, on the blockchain so that we can ensure its authenticity and follow its audit trail from the beginning of its of time, when it was first created, every edit that's been made to it and how it was modified. Um, we, need, we may need to uh, adopt a default mode of skepticism to anything that sounds too good to be true, which we should probably be doing already. And we need better regulation around the use of synthetic media for nefarious purposes. Now, to solve issues with AI taking away our agency and autonomy, um, our solutions are similar to the solutions for maintaining our privacy. However, we're also going to need better regulations around systems that are trying to take away our autonomy and decision making. Um, we may also need to solve um, these issues with AI safety here in the near future. Um, right now, at least, we need to keep humans overseeing these systems. Some of them may become fully autonomous, but Anytime there's something that's going to pose a, a life or death risk or make major financial impacts on people's lives, um, we need to have humans in the loop on these systems to make sure that they're not getting out of control. Um, in fact, there should always be a method of recourse for any of these systems um, and human uh, intervention or overseeing the systems at at least the high level. And we also need to develop uh, sensible uh, safety regulations um, around these AI systems that involve life uh, and death issues. And finally, uh, we need to solve ethical issues with autonomous weapons. Um, we can use our existing protections from our current international treaties. They're actually pretty strong and robust, so they cover us pretty well for right now. But we may need to ban fully autonomous weapon systems globally at some point in time. So what about Alice and Bob? How are they doing after their argument with their kids about job loss? Well, after dinner, everyone stormed off and went to bed. However, the next day, Claire and Dan decide to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with their parents. They suggest that Alice and Bob should consider upskilling and seek new, higher tech jobs. They show them information on the high growth, demand, and pay for these new high tech jobs. And as a result, Alice takes some online courses um, on AI-assisted accounting. And Bob takes some classes at the community college uh, to get certified as a robotics technician. With her new skills, Alice gets a new job managing an AI automated accounting system. And Bob also gets a new job training and maintaining factory robots. Alice and Bob's new jobs are higher paying, more rewarding, and more meaningful. The whole family meets up again for dinner to celebrate Alice and Bob's new jobs. And the entire family lives happily ever after, at least until chapter three, AI ethics of the future. All right, so finally, let's discuss AI ethical issues uh, for the future, these potential ethical issues that we might be dealing with for the next 100 years or so. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, this is the part of the presentation where things get kind of weird and a bit scary. So I leave it up to you to decide what sounds like science fiction and what things are likely to actually happen. 
All right, so back to Alice and Bob, uh, chapter three, AI ethics of the future. So now the year is 2070. Alice and Bob are both in their 80s. Their children, Claire and Dan, are now in their 60s. And they now have two grandchildren. Claire has a daughter named Emma. She's in her 20s. And Dan has a son named Fred. He's also in his 20s. One day, Emma and Fred come home to visit their grandparents, Alice and Bob. While they're having dinner, Alice and Bob ask them, so what's new? Emma tells them that she's considering tech augmentation. She wants to upgrade her biological body with cybernetics and nanotechnology. Fred says that he's in a relationship with a sentient AI and is planning to get married. Alice says, uh, she, Alice can't believe that Emma would ever possibly want to modify her body with technology. She says, no granddaughter of mine will ever become a cyborg. And Bob can't believe that Fred would want to marry an AI. He says, no grandson of mine will ever marry a toaster. Emma explains that her tech augmentations will make her smarter, stronger, and healthier. And Fred explains that his AI partner is not a toaster. They are a conscious being that has rights just like Alice and Bob. An argument breaks out, everyone starts yelling, and both the grandkids decide that it's time to leave. Alice and Bob are now sitting alone in their home, sad that their grandkids stormed out. Alice says, all of this new technology is ruining our family. And Bob says, the world is changing so fast, I just don't understand it anymore. Alice and Bob both feel lost in a world they no longer recognize. All right, so there are likely to be many amazing benefits of future AI over the next century, uh, more potential benefits than we could ever possibly imagine. Um, for the example, in the next century, it's quite likely that we will develop artificial general intelligence, also known as general AI. General AI, by definition, will be able to perform any task that an average human can perform, and it will be able to flexibly adapt to solve a wide variety of problems just like we do. AI will likely help us improve uh, human health in amazing ways. It may be able to cure all diseases, prevent aging, and minimize human suffering. It may also help us to increase our intelligence, our strength, and give us other superhuman abilities. AI might also help us solve some of the biggest challenges that we face today and in the future. It may help us fix global climate change, eliminate poverty, create better political systems, and even more efficient and equitable economies. However, there will almost certainly be significant problems with future AI technologies. First, humans could become obsolete. Imagine if you could ask a horse in the early 1900s how the automobile or tractor would have changed its life. It probably would have told you that a car or a tractor was going to make its life a lot easier. Unfortunately, for the horse, these technologies also made them obsolete to the economy. In fact, we hit peak horse in 1915, just as the automobile and tractor began to scale up in production. And now, imagine the following scenario. AI automates all of the jobs of real economic value, unemploying most human beings. Without productive jobs, most humans essentially produce negative economic value. We cost more than we produce. As a result, humans would progressively lose more economic power and control. We eventually become obsolete in a world that we created, just like the horses when we replace them with tractors and automobiles. Second, there are genuine concerns that AI could cause a collapse of our modern institutions. AI could literally break capitalism and democracy. Um, we're beginning to see the erosion of these institutions under the early waves of our current primitive AI. The pace of technology is already changing faster than our institutions and social norms can keep up with. What happens when we have um, like new major AI discoveries and breakthroughs on a daily basis? How will we keep up with that rate of change? And what happens if our modern institutions actually collapse under the weight of these new AI technologies? Well, we could easily end up in a very dystopian future. We could see a return of authoritarianism uh, with an AI-enabled surveillance state. We could see a return of communism with a super-efficient AI-based command economy that just completely out-competes free market capitalism. If you had an AI system that could essentially track all of the inputs and outputs of an economy, it could, in theory, produce much uh, tighter utility curves than free market capitalism does. Uh, we could see a return of fascism. If we had a group of technologically modified superhumans, they would probably see themselves as a superior race and may start seeing everybody else as inferior. We could end up with a new AI religion, um, something where people essentially worship an artificial superintelligence because to them it seems uh, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, and immortal 
by most people's standards. Uh, we could end up with a dystopian super bureaucracy where we're essentially just cogs in a giant bureaucratic machine built to serve an AI. Or instead of returning to one of these old dystopias with AI-enabled technologies, we might see the rise of something entirely new. Uh, we could end up in a world that prioritizes humans as data processing nodes over individual human experiences and emotions, uh, something referred to as dataism by uh, its author, uh, author Yuval Noah Harari, who coincidentally is one of my favorite authors. Fourth, we could likely face ethical issues uh, with artificial superintelligence, also known as super AI. Now, if we create artificial general intelligence, then an AI explosion is likely to happen relatively soon. They call this AI escape with the trajectory. So a general AI that can write code better than the average software developer could, in essence, rewrite its own code. A self-improving AI system would then rapidly uh, become more capable and powerful uh, than even the smartest person on the planet. Without the biological limitations of human brains or brains in general, um, it could be essentially become more uh, intelligent than all human beings combined. And as a result, it would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, for us to control it. By the time we have a strategy in place, like a super intelligence would already be decades ahead of us in terms of its countermeasures. However, the long-term issue that I am most concerned about is something we call the value alignment problem. <clears throat> Essentially, how do we ensure AI's goals, uh, that AI's goals and values stay aligned with human goals and values? We humans can barely agree on our own values. So how can we possibly get an AI to agree, uh, to agree that it should align with our human values? Um, if you think about it, an AI without the ability to experience pain or suffering would almost certainly evolve to become a high-functioning sociopath or psychopath. Um, in addition, these reinforcement AI systems, they quickly learn how to exploit these reward loopholes, which is something we call reward hacking. So they learn to break the rules of the game in order to maximize their reward, even if they're not supposed to break the rules. Ultimately, with explicit deterministic hard-coded rules or these reward function in Zoom reinforcement um, learning systems, there will always be something that we fail to account for. Some unintended consequence, something we never saw coming. And I think this is what Isaac Asimov was trying to tell us with his three laws of robotics and iRobot. Um, we had better be certain that the objective that we plan, uh, we build into an AI system is actually what we want because much like the genie in the bottle, it's often that what you ask for is nothing like what you actually will get. Now, lack of AI alignment could lead to scenarios where we completely lose control of an AI. Now, imagine that we create an economy composed of three parts. So first, we have automated robots that mine asteroids. Second, we have automated robots that convert asteroid raw materials into parts for new robots. And third, we have automated robots that build more robots to mine, refine, and convert asteroids into new robots. And now this is essentially a fully autonomous, self-sustaining economy. No human intervention needs to be involved. It just keeps growing. How do you keep it from mining every asteroid in our solar system to build an army of asteroid mining robots? And what happens if it runs out of asteroids to mine? I mean, Earth would probably look like a giant asteroid to an army of hungry asteroid mining robots. And in the terms of nanotechnology, we refer to uh, this self-replicating uh, scenario as the gray goo scenario, if you're interested in looking more into it. Finally, AI could lead to the end of humanity. Now, imagine that AI and human values do go out of alignment. At first, AI might see us as a non-threat, like pets. Then it might see us as a nuisance, more like ants at a picnic. Then it might see us as raw materials, just fleshy bags of carbon and water that could probably be put to better use for its own objectives. Then it might see us as competition for shared resources that it needs for its own objectives. Finally, it might see us as a threat and aim to destroy us for its own survival. When competing directly with an artificial superintelligence in a battle for survival, it almost certainly ends with humans losing. I know the movies might show humans winning more often than not, but I generally don't think it would even be possible, even in the realm of possibility, to defeat an artificial superintelligence that's fighting for survival. So what do we do to prevent these dire situations from happening? Well, fortunately, there are a few potential solutions to minimize the risks of these future dystopias for humanity. First, be mindful. Many of the issues that humanity is currently facing are the result of a conflict between our evolution and our technology. We evolved to survive in environments with very short bursts of high stress and then very long periods of recovery. 
However, our modern society is constantly triggering us with stressors, which lead to chronic stress, anxiety, and depression. Mindfulness is the antidote to many of these mental health diseases of modern society. So be mindful. And be mindful of others too. Treat your fellow humans with compassion, empathy, and respect. The best way that we can teach AI our human values is to actually live these values ourselves. We also need to be mindful with our technology. It's far too easy to just mindlessly use technology without care or reflection. And when we finally do create sentient or conscious AI, we're going to need to treat that with respect too. Second, embrace change in an ever-changing world. Rather than fearing change, try embracing it instead. If you fight a changing world that wants to change without you, whether you're in it or not, I mean, you're going to lose every time. So embrace change and adapt to whatever comes next. Be skeptical about things that you disagree with or that disagree with your current beliefs, but keep an open mind about new ideas. It is quite likely a large portion of your belief system will be obsolete by the time uh, you finally are of old age. Um, use technology where it benefits us um, or provides us with real benefits and eliminate it where it causes us more harm than good. Third, we need to align AI values with human values. When building AI systems, we want to embed our human values into these systems. We want to focus on rewarding goal states rather than actions with reinforcement learning. We want to utilize techniques like reinforcement learning via human feedback, collaborative inverse uh, reinforcement learning, and inverse reward design. Uh, we want to train systems to imitate human actions or seek human approval the same way children do. That's how they learn to imitate our human values and then eventually embrace them. Uh, build in uncertainty so that AI doesn't confidently go out doing something that it, that is clearly wrong. And prefer to keep our options open by avoiding irreversible action, something we refer to as attainable utility preservation in the AI space. And provide the ability to intervene if an AI makes a decision that does not align with our values, something that we refer to as corrigability. Now, ultimately, no matter how things play out over the next few decades, in the very long run, there are only three paths forward for humanity and AI. Either humanity and AI peacefully coexist together forever, uh, AI destroys humanity if we don't accidentally destroy ourselves first, or humanity and AI eventually merge and become one and the same. If you really think about it, there really aren't any other real possibilities in the wrong, long run. And I've, I've thought about this for over 20 years. I cannot think of a fourth potential scenario where you have both humans and AI continuing to move forward together. Now, given humanity's historical track record in similar situations, it is unlikely that humans will be able to peacefully coexist with superintelligent AI forever. We've simply seen too many past scenarios where a sufficiently advanced civilization has displaced the indigenous population. It's actually much more likely that we'll, we will either destroy ourselves first or AI will eventually displace humans. And now that might be good for AI, but that is definitely bad news for us humans. So given these three options, the most realistic yet hopeful path forward for humanity is that we eventually merge with our technology. Essentially, we merge with uh, our technology to the extent that human intelligence and artificial intelligence become indistinguishable from one another. Which leads to one last potential solution, merge with our technology to avoid human extinction. If we merge humanity and our technology, then there is no us versus them, no AI versus humans. There is only us. Um, if there is only us, then there is no one to fight against. Now, this idea might seem far-fetched, but these cell phones are in our hands are already extension of our brains. And the younger generation is ready and willing to have them connected directly to their minds if or when the technology becomes available. In many ways, we're already augmenting our human bodies and minds with man-made technologies on a daily basis. For example, wearable devices, artificial limbs, pacemakers, contact lenses, cochlear implants, and more. And in the next decade and beyond, it is likely that we'll be even more deeply and continuously connected to our technology. For example, coming soon are lightweight augmented reality glasses, implantable IoT devices, low-cost gene editing, and eventually brain-computer interfaces. And now I know some of you are thinking, wow, this sounds a lot like the Borg from Star Trek, and that wasn't very awesome. However, you have to keep in mind that the Borg were fictional characters based on what technology would look like if it goes horribly wrong for humanity. What might a world look like if we merged with our technology in ways that were actually beneficial for everyone? I mean, the reality might look much more utopian than dystopian. Now, 
This is going to sound strange, but it is likely that we are one of the last generations of Homo sapiens to inhabit the Earth. Whatever comes next is likely going to be very different from what we've known for the past two to 300,000 years. All right, so what about Alice and Bob? How are they doing after their argument with their grandchildren? Well, Alice and Bob decided to put their personal opinions aside. They love their grandchildren and want to be part of their lives. So they learn about the techno sapiens movement that Emma is part of. They learn that tech augmentation really isn't all that different from their glasses, hearing aids, pacemakers, and artificial knees. Uh, they also spend time learning about artificial sentience to better understand Fred's relationship with a sentient AI. Uh, they talk to Fred's partner and learn more about its thoughts, feelings, goals, and values. And they realize that sentient AI really isn't all that different from us. Alice and Bob also start learning about mindfulness. They discover how to find a balance between technology and humanity. They use technology where it's most beneficial, and then they eliminate it where it's not. Alice and Bob learn to adapt to a changing world. They now embrace change rather than fight it. So they invite their grandchildren over to tell them about everything that they've learned. Emma and Fred are happy to hear that their grandparents have learned to adapt to their high-tech future world. And that they're embracing change rather than fighting against it. And once again, they all live happily ever after. Until chapter four, welcome robot overlords. I'm just kidding. These jokes always work better when you're in person. Well, all right, so that's how Alice and Bob's story ends. But how does our story end? Well, technology is inherently amoral. It is neither intrinsically good nor evil. The same technology can be used to take mankind to the moon, or it can be used to propel warheads into cities. And as a result, it's going to be up to us as a society to choose whether we want to use AI to make the world a better place for everyone or to use it for our own power, profit, and control. With great power comes great responsibility. And with AI, we have just been given the greatest superpower that humankind has ever known. Thank you. <laughs>